Hey everyone, today we're looking at every character's worst add-on from throughout DBD history. Some are more current, and others have their worst add-on from a while back. Either way, I'm going to try and identify the worst for each. Let's get into it. Trapper's worst add-on I think was probably the original Wax Brick which reduced the size of skill checks by 30% on sabotage actions. If you didn't know, you could sabotage bear traps back upon release. It would take 8 seconds and would remove the trap from the game, breaking it. This add-on therefore simply made the zones of that 8 second sabotage smaller, which is debatably a buff to survivors, forcing them to be more accurate. At most, I believe a missed skill check would slow them down by a second or two. Considering sabotaging happens largely when safe, this is really terrible. Wraith's worst, I'm going with the one I covered recently, the then called the Ghost White, which would reduce your terror radius to 0 meters after uncloaking, but only if you remained entirely still, this effect being lost if you moved. It's like a strange add-on version of Insidious, which is also a really bad perk, except it didn't even remove your red stain, making it even worse than that even. Billy's worst add-on could be a bunch from throughout the years, however I'm going with one I covered fairly recently, the Black Grease, which was introduced after his rework and would moderately increase the cooldown time of your chainsaw when a flashlight was shining on you, a bizarre and dreadful effect. Nurse's worst is quite possibly the old heavy panting, which gave a bad upside for a really bad downside. It would increase the chain blink window or the time in between blinks when you can decide to blink once more or not, the downside being a longer fatigue after after ending a blink. This is a really terrible trade-off in my opinion, and is one that isn't worth it in any capacity. There's always enough time between blinks, and an additional stun duration would have felt really bad. The yellow equivalents of these add-ons also used to give the same effect, but without the downsides, making it debatably even worse. Maya's worst add-on that hasn't even been touched through the years is the tacky earrings, which increase both your active stalk by around 0.1 meters per second, and your inactive stalk by about 0.3 meters per second. It's practically nothing considering how stalking is used in bursts, and already slows you so considerably. Hag's worst add-on from throughout the years is undoubtedly her iridescent add-on, Waterlog Shoe, which gave the effect of making survivors gain a small hindered effect when triggering traps. This however came at the cost of the removal of the part of your power that makes it powerful the teleporting. In its original version too, it didn't provide a buff to movement speed, but instead left you at 4.4 meters per second, slow and with a considerably worse power. Doctor's worst add-on is the scrap tape. This add-on has had a rather interesting history, being so bad at one point that it was literally just removed from the game entirely in 3.5.0, before being reintroduced in 3.6.0, a later patch. This add-on alters the effect of the shock, and makes it a ring instead of a burst forward. It makes the shocks confusing and hard to hit, and often makes it so you'll always miss the survivors, as they're able to step in the center of the shock. Huntress's worst is debatably the old wooden Fox, which was introduced in patch 4.7.0 as a new purple. It gave the effect of giving a 10 second duration of undetectable after reloading. It applies at the start of the reload, reasonably giving you more like 9 seconds. It further is likely shorter as it takes some time for the terror radius to narrow. What's more, and the big kicker, is of course that Huntress has a lullaby, which this add-on does not affect making it largely worthless. Even now with its 30 second duration, it's at most got niche potential. Bubba's worst one I've mentioned before, the old chainsaw file, back when Bubba shared his add-ons with Billy. This made it so many of the add-ons that were fairly effective on Billy were pretty abysmal on Bubba. In the case of chainsaw file, a reduction to the distance in which chainsaw noises could be heard was one of the worst, with Bubba having no way to quickly reach someone's position, and his his chainsaw being just as loud as Billy's. Freddy's worst add-on is probably the old cat block, which marginally buffed him for a trade-off that actively works against him. It reduced the time taken to fall asleep by a small 1.5 seconds. It then further gave quite a sizable debuff of increasing skill check chances. This would provide better chances to snap out of the dream world, where back then, Freddy wouldn't be able to damage them, and they would otherwise receive a 50% reduction to action speed. 
It's really strange add-on, helping you to get survivors asleep and then encouraging them to get out faster. Pig's worst add-on I would maybe debate is her old iridescent Amanda's letter, which would give the pretty great effect of revealing survivor auras within 12 meters when crouched, however would remove 3 of your 4 traps and 2 of your 5 boxes. I think this was meant to be a little more lore focused as an add-on and suffered as a result. It really does just remove pretty much your power though, in exchange for a much worse effect. A single trap and higher odds to remove that trap isn't brilliant, and then needing to rely on crouching to locate survivors is just pretty bad. And well, slow. Clown's worst add-on I think was likely Robin Feather in its original state. It simply gave a 30% reduction to the cooldown time between bottle throws. This is just really unnecessary with you already able to release them within very quick succession. There is literally no reason ever you'd need to spam bottles that quickly, and that's such a minimal number too to make a difference. Spirit's add-on the Senko Hanabi is quite peculiar, with it having the effect of blocking vaults within 4 meters of your husk after exiting phase for a duration of 5 seconds. It also describes your husk to explode, causing this effect, which I've always found kind of interesting. This add-on is really bad, and takes more focus to use than the subsequent value you will get in return. It's really weak, and it has terrible numbers with a short duration and range. Legion's worst add-on is maybe their pre-buff BFFs, which required 30 tokens compared to the current 15. You gain tokens by hitting survivors in Feral Frenzy, gaining more for the higher number you hit consecutively. Once at 30, you would activate the add-on. The add-on only works in the end game and gives a 4% boost to movement speed when out of Frenzy. It's not bad, but 1. It's not always going to activate, 2. It doesn't work in Frenzy, and 3. It's only at the very end of the game. Plague's worst add-on was probably her old Limestone Seal, which had the pitiful effect of increasing object infection duration by a tiny 5 seconds. Pretty terrible add-on. Ghostface's worst add-on I would say was the old marked map, which would give an additional 1 second of instinct when a survivor revealed your location. This is so unnecessary and really provides you with no extra information you otherwise wouldn't have. Demogorgon I would go with the Violet Wax Cap. This add-on changes the duration of the undetectable status from 3 seconds to 3.5 seconds after exiting a portal. It's always been this way and has somehow never received a change, and now never will unfortunately. Oni's worst add-on is the polished Maydate, which has never been changed since release. It alters Oni's passive power recharge from being around 8 minutes to about 6.5. As Oni's power cannot passively recharge beyond 98%, it makes it even more useless. Deathslinger's worst add-on could really be just about anything, but it's quite likely the Jaw Smasher, which is an add-on that provides you with a 1% fast movement speed whilst aiming down sights. For reference, this moves your ADS movement speed from 3.74 meters per second to 3.78 meters per second. That is never going to be noticeable nor useful. The sad part about this is, and something quite confusing, is that this was actually nerfed down from its prior original release number of 5% additional movement speed when aiming down sights. Still pretty bad, but definitely noticeable at least. Execution Executioner's worst add-on I'm saying is the Scarlet Egg, and mainly because it annoys me. This add-on technically has worse counterparts of the Leopard Print Fabric and the Misty Day Painting, but the egg being a purple and having this effect is just sad. It increases the duration of instinct after a survivor steps on a trail for an additional 1.5 seconds. This is never useful and is greatly unhelpful for Pyramid Head's power, which requires precision. This add-on was recently buffed, and it had its numbers increased up to 3 seconds of instinct. This is bad in itself, but what's worse is that the weaker counterparts at 1 and 0.5 seconds weren't touched, and instead remained the same. Blights is the Compound 7, which is a really terrible add-on that relinquishes your control of your movement as Blight, and forces your camera into a set position when you bounce nearby to a survivor. When within 16 meters of a survivor, you will automatically face 
just the nearest survivor after a slam. It sounds kind of okay, but it's incredibly disorienting, inaccurate, and largely detrimental when rushing toward groups. Twin's worst add-on I would say is the Sewer Sludge, which adds an additional 2 seconds onto the removal time of Victor. This is incredibly inconsequential, and will basically do nothing with most people removing Victor at times when they are safe, or often choosing to hold on to him. It was even worse back upon the release of Twins, as the most common strategy was to hold Victor, as Twins back then didn't have the ability to recall Victor, and so he would stay indefinitely on a survivor until downed. Trickster's worst add-on was the old Lucky Blade, which would slightly decrease the decay of a survivor's laceration meter, but only when you were out of blades. A very odd pairing and effect to have, especially as slightly probably means something as small as around 10%. Nemesis's worst add-on is probably his fairly famous pre-buff Lickitung. This add-on applied a 0.15 second extra duration of hindered after being contaminated by the tentacle. This slows survivors down to such small degrees that it is quite literally unnoticeable. This was pitifully buffed in 5.3.0 to 0.2 seconds. Cenobite just has lots of bad add-ons that add tiny numbers onto different parts of his kit. I think the worst is maybe the one that extends the reach of his chain shot by 2 meters, the spoiled meat. The times when this additional 2 meters will matter is next to none. It's definitely not useful in chase, and is mainly only useful when trying to stop a box solve. Even then though, it's highly unlikely you'll have a clear shot or line of sight to make this extra 2 meters worthwhile. Artist's worst add-on is without a doubt the charcoal stick, which provides basically no effect. It removes the aura of flying crows for survivors, which basically does nothing. Survivors, if they do manage to dodge a crow, will manage to do so on sound, and not because the crow is visible mid-flight. The one benefit this add-on has is it can vaguely cover the direction of where the bird fired from. This add-on also has the horrendous downside of making crows visible to survivors with an aura for 0.5 seconds when they're placed, which allows survivors to directly counter your anti-loop power as they can see exactly where the crows are facing. Sadako's worst add-on could really be just about anything in her kit as it was all largely terrible for a long time. However, the add-on I think I'm going with is the iridescent remote control. This add-on reveals survivor auras for 7 seconds, whenever they are within 16 meters of a TV and carrying a tape. This prior to Sadako's rework was truly terrible, having no real usage, with Condemned progressing slowly, and it often being the case that you would never even need to move a tape during the game. Even if you did, the likelihood of gaining value from it was tiny. This is one of the worst iridescent add-ons there have ever been. Dredge's worst add-on I think I've mentioned before, and it's War Helmet, which gives the terrible effect of a 1.5 second longer duration of instinct gained after teleporting in Nightfall. This is really inconsequential, and laughably bad as a green. Wesker's Red Herb I believe is his worst add-on, simply adding an additional 2 seconds onto first aid spray usage. Knight's worst add-on is maybe his current one, Town Watch's Torch. It's just a very bizarre add-on more than anything, and rewards you for playing badly. After 3 guard hunts failed to get you a hit, you receive the undetectable status for 25 seconds. A very odd effect, and one that you won't be able to consistently activate or control. Skull Merchant's worst add-on is debatably her current stereo remote mic, which increases the unhackable state of your drone by 10%, which sounds like a lot, but in reality it simply changes it from 10 seconds to 11 seconds, making really no difference. Singularity's worst add-on I would say is probably the Nano Machine Gel, as the effect is just a bit unnecessary, and is not really going to give you an advantage in any discernible way. It applies the broken status for 40 seconds when you hit a survivor in overclock mode. If you land this hit, you're probably in a chase and they're not healing anyway, making it a really useless effect, particularly for a tiny 30 seconds. Alright, well that's gonna do it, I do hope you enjoyed, and let me know which add-ons you would pick other than these down below. Thanks, and goodbye.